All right, so we gave you three examples to uh, get used to with this theory uh, about the savings and investment diagram. So trying to figure out what the new equilibrium level of real interest rate would be, as well as the amount of savings and investment holding all else constant. So let's go ahead and take a look. First question we asked was, we see an increase in consumer confidence. Well, if consumers are more confident, they're gonna save less, so therefore we are going to see a leftward shift of the savings function. And so this will be my S prime, where my consumer confidence has, whoops, not declined, has increased. And so we'll get a new point right here, where we'll see an increase in our new R, and a decrease in both savings and investment, once we have moved back to our equilibrium. So that's the first one, if consumer confidence increases, we will save less because we feel like the economy is going to be better. We don't need to consume as much. The second one I gave you was we see a decrease in business taxes. Well, right away, if it's the business side, you know, man, that's got to be investment. And if there's a decrease in business taxes, that's going to be a positive. We're going to want to invest more decrease in business taxes. So we will see my investment go up here. So this is an increase in tau business taxes because capital is going to increase from our user cost of capital and MPKE diagram. So what does that do? Well, as we see here, that makes the real interest rate go up, just like we saw before. But this time, we see our savings equaling our investment. We see that increase. So we see an increase on both of these. The third one that we looked at is actually a double shift. It says we see an increase in technology at the same time we see government purchases increase. Well, an increase in technology is going to have an increase in overall capital and investment from our production function. So that's this. This is my increase in A, right? Increase in A, increase in technology. But at the same time, we're going to see an increase in government purchases, which means we're running a higher deficit, which means overall savings because it includes, right? Remember, overall savings right, includes public savings, we will see this is what happens when the government purchases increases, holding all else constant, right, taxes and whatnot. So we know for a fact that the interest rate rises. We know for a fact that the interest rate rises R prime. But the way I drew it, as you can see, the savings would have went down. But what if I would have drawn it like just a small change, right? We could have seen the, the savings go, um, go up. So the thing is, is we don't know what's happening to savings. And so it depends. So it depends on the magnitude of the shifts, right? It depends on which one shifts more. And so you'll have to draw it out. And if I ask you on a quiz or an exam, I might say like savings shifts by more or investment shifts by more or shifts by less, or there could be numbers, and if there's numbers, then you have to do the whole thing out and then figure out which one's higher, which one's lower. In fact, let's go ahead and do a numerical example next.